Hello students, welcome to HSC Chemistry and Experiment 3, Heats of Combustion of Alcohols. In this particular video, there are again two little excerpts from the GoPro, having a look at how this experiment should be set up and carried out. The point of this particular experiment is to compare the molar heats of combustion experimentally for a range of different alcohols. What you will see is an example of just one of these alcohols, ethanol, carried out with a full set of results. From that set of results, you will see on the final slide a few calculations based on those results and some of the potential conclusions that you could make. You will need to look at some other videos or some of the other support material that you have either in school, uh, in your textbook or online, uh, if you're going to add to that. And certainly, uh, hopefully, if you've carried out this particular experiment, you'll have a set of results of your own, which you'll be able to process. So this should just give you a little bit of an idea of how you should set up this experiment and what sort of values you should expect. Hi students and welcome to experiment three in the HSC chemistry series and particularly in the production of materials topic. In this one we're actually going to be comparing the heat of combustion for different alcohols. So the first one that I'm going to have a look at is this one which is ethanol and it's the one that we um, like to concentrate on. It's the one that we're looking at potentially in this topic as a um, alternative fuel and it also a product for the manufacture of uh, different types of materials. So the first thing that I want to do is I'm going to zero um, my balance and then I'm going to pop this on. And when I pop this on I have a value you can see here of 160.36 grams. Now that's going to be important because I'm going to um, have a look at what sort of weight of ethanol I have once this reaction has um, finished. So that's the first thing I wanted to know my starting mass of my uh, spirit burner. The second thing I've done is to uh, measure exactly 100 mils of water. I'm going to add that to my beaker. And I also want to measure the starting temperature. So I've got my thermometer in here, which you may or may not be able to see there, it's sort of facing the opposite direction. Um, but you can see there, and so what I need to do first of all is I need to record the starting temperature. And um, I can tell you that my starting temperature is 23 degrees C, 23 degrees. So then what I want to do is I want to try and uh, calculate a value for the molar heat of combustion. So what we want to do is we want to heat up this water for a certain period of time and uh, we're going to do that by using the uh, ethanol as a fuel source. So I'm going to light that and uh, hopefully it will be away. And then the, as the ethanol burns, it's going to uh, heat that water up. And so we're going to be able to see a change in the temperature. Make sure that's a light, it is. So I'm going to watch and I want to have a value of probably around about 20, 20 degrees increase in temperature. So it's clear for me to see, but I also want to make sure that it's the highest value that I can get. So I'm just going to let that um, proceed for a little bit. Usually you're probably going to heat for a couple of minutes. That's probably going to be sufficient amount of time in order for um, the reaction to generate sufficient heat to give you about a 20 degree rise in temperature. Now just having a little bit of a look at the moment, uh, I can see that I've got a couple of degrees uh, so far, so that's um, going fairly slowly. You may notice that I've tried to ensure that there's a very small gap between where the um, top of the burner is and the base of the beaker. One of the problems and one of the things that you will consistently um, find with this reaction is that you get asked about sources of error. And the comparison between the theoretical value and the empirical or experimental value that we have for our experiments. These can be quite different. And so sometimes we need to evaluate our experiments in terms of what are the potential factors that may have contributed to a value being higher or lower than what we were expecting. Now we will have a look at that in a little bit more detail once we've got some numbers for this. 
But at the moment I can see that my temperature has risen to about 31 degrees, so I'll continue to uh, allow this heating process to proceed for just a little bit longer, see if I can get up to around the 40 mark, and then we will stop the heating. It's important we try and do that as quickly as possible because as this particular um, substance continues um, to burn, it will use more of the ethanol and that means that the mass difference that we see between the initial weight and the final weight um, is going to increase and we don't want, we want all of that mass change to be as much as possible going into the heating of the water. We don't want it heating the air, we don't want it to be wasted. You can see I'm sitting it on a clay pipe triangle, not a gauze mat, and that's because I don't want the heat to be spread out evenly this time. I want all the heat directed straight onto that beaker, heating up that water. So my temperature has now reached 35 and a half degrees, still slowly going up, and um, still burning, so that's all. Let's just finish things up here. You can see that the temperature of the um, Water has now risen to 48 degrees. That's the highest temperature that I can see. So what I need to do now is I need to go and re-weigh the ethanol. So I'll just re-zero that. And uh, then we'll pop it on. Just having a little bit of problem with the re-zeroing here. So, um, so here is my value, uh, 166.04, 166.04. So that brings us to the final um, slide of this series and the processing of the data. As I mentioned, we're looking primarily just at ethanol, but you should make sure that you've got at least three or four different alcohols in order for you to make comparisons. It would be good to um, be able to graph these results so you can see a trend in what's happening as you increase the carbon length of the alcohol. So ethanol, methanol, or if you like methanol, ethanol, propanol, propan one ol butan one ol would be a sequence showing an additional carbon for each of those and how they um, may or may not change the heat, the molar heat of combustion. But the main thing for us is how we substitute our values into this equation. The delta H is minus C delta T. Now, when you're doing these calculations, it's very, very important to remember that this side of the equation will all relate to the same substance. The most common mistake is that this bit of information here, which is used to calculate a mass, because it looks like a mass, goes in here. And of course, that is a big mistake. It's a most common mistake that students will make. This whole MCAT section of this particular equation relates to the same substance and in this case it is the water. So what we are doing is we are heating 100 grams, 100 mils is, is the same as 100 grams because the density of water is one gram per mil. So 100 grams times the specific heat of water which you're given on your data sheet, 4.18, and then multiplied by the change in temperature. So the change in temperature is found by subtracting the initial temperature from the final temperature, which is 48 minus 23, 25 degrees. Now this is actually a value in Kelvin, but because we are looking at a difference, the, um, the difference, the, the number of um, degrees that we move up through the Celsius scale is the same as the number that we move up through the Kelvin scale, they just start at a different point. So 25 is fine. So therefore, if we look at the delta H value from our experiment, we have minus 100 multiplied by 4.18 multiplied by 25. And this gives us a value of 10,450 joules. So that's the amount of energy that's actually been transferred into that water to raise its temperature. None of that information so far has used any of the information that we collected. Now those of you who were watching very closely will have noticed that when I measured the mass initially, the cap was not on the uh, spirit burner. But when I measured it finally, it was. And as a consequence, the weight 
was higher. And obviously we can't uh, do anything with a weight that is higher. So what I did was I then went and measured the mass of the cap. You can actually see where I've done that. There's the value. And so I subtract that. And so this gives me a final mass of 158.68. So the 10,450 joules is equivalent to 160.36 minus 158.68, which is equivalent to 1.68 grams. And this is ethanol. So this is the fuel on this side of the equation, and this is the water which has absorbed the energy on this side of the equation. So the water is actually heated up as a result. Now what we want to know is what the molar heat of this particular alcohol is. So this is a straight ratio thing. The easiest way for us to do this is to say 1.68 grams is to 10450 joules as, um, so if I pull up grams here, as one mole is to x joules. It's often useful at this point to convert these into kilojoules because the numbers are very big and it just makes them a little bit easier to work with. But this is actually in here, I need the molar mass of ethanol. So I need to calculate from my formula C2H6O, I need two 12.01s, I need six 1.008s, and I need one 16 which gives me 46.068 grams. So that's what goes here, 46.068. So what I do then is I just have a straight ratio. If I multiply across to get rid of these, then 46.068 multiplied by, now I'm going to call this 10.45 kilojoules, divided by 1.68 gives me an overall value. I'm going to just change... Uh, pop a little orange color down here so you can see going up here sorry over to the left um, gives me a value of 286.55 uh, kilojoules per mole so this is the molar heat of combustion the experimental or empirical molar heat of combustion of this particular um, alcohol the problem that we have is that when I look at the experimental value, I find that the experimental value, so the theoretical, theoretical, is close to about 1,367 kilojoules per mole. And one of the uh, common questions that you're asked about this particular question is why there is a difference between the empirical value and the theoretical value. Now clearly this is a big difference and hopefully you'll get something that's a little bit closer than this difference. Um, but the point is that you want to look at where has all that extra heat gone. There's a couple of factors that are at play here. The first one relates to um, the fact that this is not a complete combustion reaction in the first place. So the theoretical value assumes complete combustion. And we know that there's a lot of black smoke being given off, which means there's carbon being produced. So this is not a complete combustion reaction. This is incomplete combustion. In addition, some of the heat's lost to the air. Some of the heat is lost to the equipment uh, and is not all being absorbed by the water in order to raise its temperature. We also have... Um, a small delay between, I guess, taking the spirit burner away and capping it so there can be some more losses that are not actually being used to heat the water. So there's a number of things that you can talk about when you look at these results. And of course, these results have only looked at one alcohol and hopefully you will have looked at a number. But this should give you just a little bit of an idea of the sorts of values that you'll get from this experiment and also the different calculations that you may carry out in order to calculate the experimental molar heat of combustion of an alcohol. Thanks for watching.